Hey, what's up, guys? Phelan Carr here. And when I'm listening to Houston Dynamo News, I'm listening to the Peel Forever Orange. Within the sport, we have the possibility to bring the people together. And it is important at this moment that we're going we're gonna to fight for the city. We're going to fight for our fans. We're going to fight to, to bring them joy and to help with the healing of the, of the people in Houston. We have suffered too. And because we have suffered too, is, is something that we, we, can, we can have the same feelings and we, have, we are in the same spot than everyone. And we want to show with our job, with our fight on the field and the motivation to, to try to bring everyone together again and to move on, to recover uh, as a unit, as a city, uh, uh, to, to make the city one of the best cities in, in the United States. To, I think all three, all four of us, um, and how we kind of feel about uh, what's happened in the last week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever long it's been. I've kind of lost track. Yeah, I think we all lost track of time. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen the post, right? The the Facebook posts of, you know, nobody in Houston actually knows what day it is anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Oh, yeah. I feel that way. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, Wilmer really hit it on the head. Um, you know, the, the team is playing for Houston now. Um, that they hope that this just brings kind of they, they hope that this brings a bit of that joy back to the the city um, that you know they hope they can show the unity that the city has shown um, through this and and I just feel like you know we were talking about it I, that is absolutely what we saw from this I think all of us in our own kind of ways um, I'm sure we all have stories related to that but it, what the city did in response to what happened is just incredible you don't see it in other cities that in that magnitude no um and it wasn't just houston i mean credit to texas and, and louisiana and, and even those from outside of state but it was definitely a texas response to a texas disaster and it was incredible to witness and and you know i was in a position to witness it on you know almost in the front line so to speak and it was I, they, I had tears in my eyes multiple times and i am not afraid and ashamed to admit that no it was uh it was a surreal experience, and I think when, you know, I, I was pretty much stuck in the apartment watching the whole thing from, from TV. And um, I think what really got me is when I was finally able to get back to work, uh, you know, I, I work at Costco. And I couldn't get out to the store that, you know, I usually work out, which is Katie. And my manager there, my warehouse manager, is like, hey, you know, can you, can you go into the Galleria store? Because they need to get at least 30 employees to open and at this point, the storm had already pretty much passed, and we were just getting light rain. And um, so I go in, and to see the generosity of people who were buying just goods, just to donate. It wasn't for themselves. No, no. There was one woman, I remember, she was buying kids' clothes, cases of water, and her total was $2,000. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. I think the only thing she bought for herself was one case of water to take home. Yep. The rest of it was going to George R. Brown. Yep. And then that sentiment was echoed across the city. I mean, I know, shout out to HEB, um, yeah. because they did a tremendous job in getting stores open in areas that really needed it very quickly. Uh, I think some HEBs were down for maybe one day, maybe two mm -hmm. days at most. And that's, considering what the city went through, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, we, had, um, we, yeah, we were down for like two days at my store. Uh, before we finally opened, of course, I mean, I work in the fish department, so we didn't have anything to sell. But basically, we were just we were just focusing on. What are you getting, talking like, about? The there were fish everywhere. Yeah, right. Yeah, they, they were pretty much at that point. Talking about some go, seriously yeah, just, live catch. Just go out and yeah, just go out into the the street yourself and get your fish. As a side uh, note, actually, yeah. not to derail you, but did you see the video of the guy catching a fish in his house because of the floodwaters yes, in his house? Yes, I saw right? that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's I did see that. Yeah, that was that was pretty comical. That was no, awesome. Yeah, a, yeah. HEB um, did a really good job of responding. They had a, they had their own uh, emergency response team that yep, was going around. Yep, very common yeah. for corporations yeah, to do that. Very so, awesome, yeah. Uh, you know, to, to keep us a little bit on track today, so, you know, we'll do our normal normal stuff, but a bulk of this show is just going to be talking about Harvey, how to donate, what happened down at BBVA, which, you know, is a, incredible. Big, a big part of that was the Dynamo and BBVA. And the Dash. And the Dash, they, yes. They pitched in. Um, and then, of course, you know, our last match was the Texas Der er, Derby. We will cover that in its entirety. Um, <laughs> which. 
I mean, you laugh, but it was probably one of the better matches to watch this year. And that's, oh, I'm not, I'm not taking away anything from the other wins that we had, but the fight and the grit that they had to come back, it was almost funny because it's almost, it was almost a prequel to how the city would bounce back. I know it's kind of lame, but almost how the city is gonna, would bounce back from after all of this. I'll give you, I'll give it to you. It's, you know, it's not bad. I know it's a stretch, and then we'll sit up for the it's Colorado match. Uh, we might throw in some dash. Hopefully, we can throw in some dash. We've got the, atro- or the atrocious U.S. men's national team to talk about. Um, <laughs> I think that's an understatement. <laughs> I want to say something. I'm going to keep. Uh, that. Gonna but Sean, go ahead and uh, go ahead and do your thing. With My the, thing. Uh, yeah. Your, my, oh, the, your the, tickets. The thing. Yeah, oh yeah. So again, this week we do have tickets to give away to the Dynamo match on Saturday. If you were here live at Eighth Wonder, shout out to those that are live here, and you want to go to the game on Saturday, come up and say hi to Edson, and we will get your name into the drawing. You get two chances. Edson's right over there. These tickets are free, um, and they're being given away. If you are watching live on YouTube or you're watching live well, on YouTube, um, <laughs> feel free to send a little YouTube chat message or a tweet. We decided to add tweets this week uh, to Edson, at the, and he's at the Peel 5 this week. Uh, send him a tweet or a, fa- a YouTube message, and uh, we'll get your name in the drawing as well. If you're here live, you get two entries. If you're online watching, you get one entry. And uh, we look forward to all the names that want to participate in the drawing because they're free tickets yes. and nobody should ever turn down free tickets. And this game is going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. I'm first match. major withdrawals right now. First <laughs> match after Harvey. Um, it's going to be great. And yes. then they're, they're doing supposedly doing quite a few things related to Harvey, a lot of recognition and, and things of that nature, every, which doesn't Every ticket me. you also buy, $5 is donated. $5 to donation. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. To the Red Cross. Yep. Yeah. Actually, no, to the Hurricane Harvey. I, I, it's I, a little yes. different. With that being said, I have two season tickets, and I bought three more. Very cool. But three nice. more, yes. Just Very so cool. I'm going to read it off for the first time this show. Uh, I, I guess we can, throughout the show, we can all just read it off, uh, the links for donating. Um, I was going to try to throw it up on the stream, but it uh, doesn't want to cooperate, so that's not going to happen. We'll tweet them out throughout the show yes. as well. Yes. Um, I'm looking at you, Edson. <laughs> Uh, but so what's what's the first link? Yes, the first. Uh, if you want to donate to the Red Cross Hurricane uh, Harvey Relief Fund, uh, it's going to be www.redcross.org backslash donate backslash Hurricane Harvey. Uh, if you yep, want, I want you to memorize all of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> if not, it will be in the description for the video. Uh, so if you're watching the show, just and click tweet on it. it. Yes, and At tweet it. The Peel 05. Um, if you want to donate, 05. If you want to donate to the Greater Houston Community Foundation for Hurricane Relief Fund. Uh, it's going to be uh, ghcf.org backslash hurricanes dash relief backslash. I know that one's a mouthful. Uh, like I said, it's going to be in the descriptions. Yeah. Do I get to do mine now? Do, yeah. do I get to do mine? Uh, I, I, can, to... I can read it. I got it. No, 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 no. Because okay. I'm going I'm to make it short for you. Okay. For this. Right. If you're listening and you're out in Fort Bend County, uh, you can go to fortbendrecovers.org. And there's a donate link on there. Uh, actually, it's a give help button. And then there's a donate link from there. Uh, you can also, if you want to volunteer, uh, what they're recommending for the city of Houston, if you want to volunteer in the Houston area, go to volunteerhou.org or .com. It's also on fortbendrecovers.org in case anybody's curious. Um, and they ma- So Volunteer Houston actually matches volunteer opportunities from organizations with volunteers that want to volunteer. Um, and they include like specifics about what you're volunteering for. Uh, it's a great way to kind of, you know, if you have something specific you're, you're comfortable doing or and or you have specific uh, capabilities, you know, that, that your regular job happened to give you uh, or provide for you in terms of training and things like that. Like if you're a nurse, certified nurse, uh, they have specific uh, opportunities for you to fulfill um, based on those types of things as well. So it's, it's a great opportunity for that. Um, and it's been incredible watching the response of Houston volunteering, too. Um, I mean... I don't know if you guys saw the tweet from Michael Berry, not that I support his show, but if you happen to see his tweet, uh, he was talking about he had a picture of a line outside of GRB, and his tweet said, you know, this isn't the line for uh, people going into the, for evacuees. This isn't the line for food. This isn't the line for water. This is the line for volunteers, people waiting to volunteer at GRB, and that line was around the building, and GRB is not a small building no. by any stretch yeah. of the imagination. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I have been told repeatedly that they have, in multiple locations uh, at Red Cross shelters and things like that, have had to turn away volunteers because they've had so many. Um, so again, if you want to volunteer, if you have the time to volunteer and you'd love to give your time, volunteerhou.com. It's a great way to do that. And you can search by region as well. So if you're in a specific region like Fort Bend or Galveston County, uh, you can volunteer in your local area. 
Uh, I know Dickinson was hit really, really hard, um, and we definitely recommend if, if you can volunteer in your specific region. That's, you know, it, it's always good to go local if you can. I, sure. I do have to that, say, I, I saw. Go ahead, Josh. I was just going to say that 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 definitely speaks out to our community here in Texas, and that's absolutely. that's absolutely incredible. Lines, that's Texas in lines, a nutshell. That's Houston in a nutshell. Yeah, right there. absolutely. Yeah, lines wrapping around uh, GRB, just the volunteer. And you know, we that's should, incredible. You know, and and and, yeah. and uh, you know, even more to the point, right? Um, I don't, I, and I know you guys saw it, or at least I saw it. I know Justin talked about it earlier, but even Eighth Wonder. You know, a company that's out here in Houston that's that's Houston born and you know born and raised type of thing. They were out there with their big old truck, just rescuing people in high water situations. I mean, that's a company doing that. That's not you know, and and they had and multiple employees out before there. Before we that. before we leave today, we'll get a picture of that that truck and post it. Oh, on for Twitter. sure, yeah, because that, that's for actually sure. incredible. Yeah, and I mean, they, you know, it was just repeated over and over in different organizations and different areas and different people different causes different purposes i mean there's people out there there were people out there doing water rescues of course but then there's people now doing muck and gut which if you don't know what that is that's when people go in and tear out sheet rock and and anything that's been flooded they pull that out and clean it out and i that did sort of thing. Uh, and that's hard back breaking work buddy um shout out to uh megan's parents eileen and and bob they you know their their place got flooded out um mm. they got about 10 inches of water in their house and it was a surreal experience because i've never seen it um, and to see how it affected them, you know, I'm not married to their daughter, at least not yet. Um, <laughs> and it was one of those, you know, I, I felt like I was family. And oh yeah. In, in an instant too. It was, it was amazing, honestly. And, you know, again, that, that's the incredible thing, right? Is we've seen this exact yeah. same scenario echoed over and over and over it, again. And I mean, the images, you know, with everything that's happened, in this country in the last couple of years in particular it was incredible seeing how this city united regardless of who you are what you believe where you're from color of your skin you know anything it all comes back to the fact that you know what you're in our town and in this town we take care of our own you know when i went back to work you know just so you all know i work at heb and um immediately when we opened up you know all the customers coming in just thank you so much for for you know being open and being here you know and and getting away from your family to, to serve us and stuff and uh, provide for us and everybody constantly asking me today you know and continuously are you okay did you make you did you make it okay you know and that's you know, basically and been the conversation that I've had with almost everybody is how did you make out in the storm you know and, and then safely you know uh, be safe is the way you know I, I, yeah, I that I was another thing that, that really got me with them was yeah. you know we had our regional VP come in for Costco. And all he did was just walk around, shake people's hands, give people hugs, and you know, ask how their family was. Yep. You know, and it was you, you don't you don't get that too 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 much. Um, no, not like I said. I mean, you know, it, I've had the privilege this last two weeks of seeing it up close and personal, and in, in a very unique way that most people don't get the opportunity to see it. Um, and to you know, I, we were receiving stories left and right of everything going on, and to follow it as closely as I did. I mean, there were multiple moments that I had to step out because it was just, you know, if it wasn't a heart wrenching story, it was an uplifting story that just, you know, after everything else, it was, it was so good that I couldn't help it, you know. And I mean, we could spend hours talking about this. We really oh, yeah, could. I mean, and speaking yeah. of that, while you guys are talking, I'm trying to find a post because you know it goes into our next segment. Um, there was. Uh, DBG, which we'll get into this, and I have nothing bad to say about them. They get a pass for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, the oh, absolutely. 210 100%. Alliance yep. uh, from San Antonio FC. Yep. Uh, and TA. Yep. Uh, they got together. There it is. Okay. Um, I will post the link to this also in our Twitter. Um, I can't really show show the, uh, the picture. Well, Edson will post it for you. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay. Um, but they got together and they did a shirt uh, of a star over each one of those cities. Yep. In the state of Texas. Yep. Saying enemies for ninety, Texans for life. Yep. And although I am not a Texan, I, I bought the shirt. And with what I also I think is cool is that you can get in each team's colors, which I thought was even better. It's, it's brilliant. But one hundred percent of the proceeds is going to I think the Red Cross, um, which which is pretty not awesome. Uh, DBG got uh, supplies and stuff all together. They delivered them two days ago. So if you didn't happen to see it, just jump on TA or uh, DBG's Twitter. Um, the Dallas Beer Garden 
Guardians, in case you didn't know that. Um, check them out, and it's a uh, it, it's 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 a really great, especially considering how close that Texas Derby match was. Yes, and the hatred me- between the two. Uh, you know, and, and it's well, the, <laughs> and I, I've said this before, right? That like the hatred exists, but at the same time, there's this underlying sense of we're Texas first. Like you know, we are our, well. We're our cities first. We're our teams first. But then the then the te- then the state of Texas. Then after that, the U.S. Like it, it's that order. The, like yeah, and the hatred does exist because you can ask uh, after the Derby. This guy <laughs> over here on Twitter. <laughs> oh, I uh, this guy. It. Yeah, oh, this yeah. guy over here on Twitter was just having a ball. But, well, when awesome. you're stupid, yeah. you know. I mean, you have no, to. You on. have to though. No, I mean, but that it's soccer. You have to have a rivalry, and oh, you've got to talk shit. Yeah. Like that's that's yeah, just you part have of it. to. Oh no. You and, have to. And, but that's the thing, right? Like, you see it echo. You see it specifically in that where you know, like you said, you know, enemies for ninety and Texas forever. I mean, that's that's exactly it. I mean, you know, the Cowboys offered up donations. Uh, well, speaking of that, it has nothing to do with soccer. JJ Watt? No. Arlington. But can I just talk about how much I hate the Texas the Rangers, Rangers over all yeah. of this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hate on them real the fast. The Cowboys. Yeah. The Cowboys canceled their preseason game to help. Well, okay. that wasn't the Cowboys' decision. That was the NFL's decision. Yes, but the but Cowboys Jerry had Jones allowed yes. it. That's the key. Okay, all the Rangers were asked to do was swap a series, and they yep. couldn't even do that. Nope. And did you see? So did you see that? Uh, I don't want to talk about this too long, but did you see no. the Rangers uh, president's uh, interview that went out on the radio? I did. not Okay, so he said, and I quote: "We didn't want to uh, inconvenience our fans in response to why they made the decision." And somebody immediately tweeted it, and then it got quoted, and the quote response was, yeah, let's not talk about inconveniencing those Houston fans that have been dealing with feet of water in their houses. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn, burned. Yeah. But that's, that's I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, it was a, you know, the decision, whatever, okay, fine, you made the decision, but, you know, they donated money, so I can only hate on them so much, but at the same time, you know... There's there, definitely plenty of animosity, and yeah. I'm just glad. It's, it's that okay. It's okay. They're they're still they're still a little bitter about their last appearance in the World Series. Well, they're also going to be bitter when they lose this division yet again yeah. this year. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> I don't know a lot of teams that go into the World Series and they're one strike away from winning the World Series and they blow it. Mm. So we're yeah, just gonna throw Rangers a little salt in the wound there. Well, that's the Rangers for you. Yeah. <laughs> Where's our Rangers, buddy? <laughs> Notice he's not here this week. No. <laughs> he comes out of nowhere wearing a uh, Houston Strong <laughs> shirt. <laughs> also, with that being also said, uh, if you didn't see, it's on Fanatics, and the link is on uh, the Dynamo's website as well. Uh, the Dynamo have put out a Houston Strong shirt. The Rockets have put out a Houston Strong shirt. The Astros have put out a Houston Strong shirt. And I think uh, U of H also did as well. We, we got a lot of recognition, you know. Um, I'm one of the most random teams, and I, and I wouldn't expect it. You know, and it's very appreciative. Uh, Montreal Impact actually ended up wearing an armband that I said saw Houston that. Strong. Yes, I it was saw an that. orange that was cool. armband. Montreal Impact playing in the United States, and that's, that's I think, awesome. I think that's because they got that tie now to Matt Jordan. So I think we get some of hey, that. Hey, I mean, I didn't even think about it like that, but, but then, it's still, you know, that, but, that, you know that's, that's awesome, though. While we're giving out shout-outs to organizations, I definitely, you know, we definitely need to, as part of the family type of thing, we need to give a shout-out to the Stampede, um, the RGV supporters group. You know, they they work together to get a uh, donation drive type thing uh, put together, and then somebody, I believe, drove supplies up here or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. That's incredible. I saw it on Edson's so Facebook the other we day. We got about I was like, two wow. minutes before we take a break. Um Real quick, uh, <laughs> try to fit these in these two minutes. This is really um, fast. What was pretty amazing is uh, seeing all the, seeing how BBVA opened up, and was taking in all the supplies for, uh, for GRB. And I, I was there. I, I donated two cases of water that I wasn't going to end up using. Um, and then a day later, I see pictures of Kubo, um, of Memo. Dylan Remick was there. AJD. AJD. Tyler was there too. Tyler Derek. Tyler. Um, all these guys just volunteering, yeah. and as far as I know, the Dynamo did not ask them to come out. No, they did not. They did not pay them for it either. Exactly. Which normally most appearances, the Dynamo will, you know, have. There's a set number of appearances that players are supposed to make yeah. per year. The Dynamo pay for those, and in this case, the Dynamo did not pay them. They did that of their own volition. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact is, and it, it, the Texans did the same thing. You know, they are part of this community, and they understand that. They know that, um, and you know, they they act accordingly. And 
And another thing that's really impressive, and I think this will probably wrap up this segment, unfortunately, we, like I said, we go for hours, uh, <laughs> yeah. is just how full BBVA got so oh quickly with supplies. They had to turn away donations. supplies and volunteers. Uh, I mean, in that, but that's the thing, right? That's And I've said it all along. That's Houston in a nutshell. Everybody, if they had something to donate, even if it was stuff that they've had for a while, they were finding a way to donate. Yeah. You know, if people had money to spend, they were going to buy stuff. They weren't just donating money. Um, and that's great. And, you know, just to kind of wrap this up, you know, keep in mind the short-term donations are great, but this is not going to be a short-term event. No. This is going to be something that's going to linger for years. Um, the water still has not completely gone down in some of those rivers in various locations. Mm-hmm. I know south of Houston and Brazoria, for instance, south Brazoria, they're still dealing with it. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you can volunteer on the weekends after after work or whatever, please do so. It really does make a difference. They need it, and they're going to need it for a while. Um, and that is where your financial donations to things like United Way yeah. really help uh, bring everything kind of back around full circle uh, so that we can kind of get people back on their feet and back where they belong. Hey, what's up, Francisco? Uh, you caught us at the wrong time because we're about to go to break. Um, but with that being said, we are going to go to break. What's up, buddy? Uh, coming out of the break, we'll finally tackle the Texas Derby, uh, which was an amazing one. Yep. Um, and then uh, we'll go from there. Absolutely. All right. You see the heartwarming scenes here where people are opening their hearts, opening their wallets, and giving as much as they can to help their fellow person. Yesterday afternoon we established uh, BBVA Compass Stadium as the main donation center um, for, for the area, processing them, sorting them, and getting them distributed to the different shelters around the, around the area. It was, uh, it was pretty intense for a few days, for sure. Um, but out here today, because luckily uh, where I was wasn't too badly affected, so I am just here with you know, a bunch of fellow friends just trying to help out. Just seeing everything on the news, it's really heartbreaking of the people who lost everything, so we just wanted to give back. Uh, once I realized my family was okay, how do I become, how do I help? How do I get involved and make sure the community gets back on its feet? Thank you so much for bringing You're it by. Welcome. And I'm telling you, I'm going to start charging for these smiles. What a bunch of people with the most beautiful smiles you've ever seen. I get the chills every time that I look around of just these are Houstonians that are affected. You're looking at players uh, behind us moving moving supplies and and our staff directing and, and sorting through supplies and I just couldn't be prouder to see some of these players and some of uh, and some of our staff out here rolling their sleeves up and doing something that they've never done before. I think it's incredible. I think again it sort of just brings out the best in people and brings people together. I think that's amazing and it's cool to see. It shows that this community is so resilient and so proud that not, not only are they going to rebuild, but we're going to rebuild stronger and, and be a stronger community and more in touch. And it's just hope and faith that uh, together we'll make it. I mean, we're all Houston yeah. strong. <laughs> Houston strong. Don't question what works. It definitely worked. It, yes. You know what? Honestly, I will. I will take that because every time uh, we're at the Dynamo game and, and it's taking forever to score a goal, I have to get up and go to the bathroom and score a goal while I'm in the rush. Good. So why don't almost you every time? It's about five <laughs> times. Oh no, I, that's my ritual. No, that's my no, ritual. I'm like, why don't you get up like every five minutes and pretty, just go? <laughs> I mean, no, we could score fifteen happens, goals a game, on, dude. It only happens on the first goal. Oh, all right. Well, that's a little different. First so, open. Wow. It's so you score. go to the bathroom like the first twenty minutes of every match, don't you? <laughs> He's a like, lot of oh, beer. It's a long day. Yeah, a lot of beer. Yeah. Long day. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> you don't have to scream into these bikes, bro. <laughs> I know. He's, he, well, he's he's had some beer. He's a little excited. It's okay. I don't know. Uh, they echo. Testing. Not, they testing. Ha- testing. No, you're good. They've got some pop going on. <laughs> yeah. We're a little, we're a little hot might, today. It might, it might be our mix board guy. They're just. Here. <laughs> I it's know. Our sound guy. I know, yeah. Brian. I always Tech forget support. to hit the button. Yeah. We we missed out on the first like te- two seconds of our conversation. Of this one. Because uh, I forgot that button. You forgot to unmute us, basically. Yeah, I mm. forgot to unmute us. It's okay. You didn't miss anything important. No, you did. It was just we me were talking. Just, yeah, it was just him. Was uh, before we get too deep into this derby, Josh, go ahead and read out the links. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to donate to donate. To the Red Cross, uh, go to www.redcross.com or de- redcross. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. Go Let's to try this again. <laughs> Redcross.org/slash/donate/slash hey, slash hurricane. I got an idea Texas real quick. I got you don't an have idea the full link quick. right here. Why? Are, hey, why I, got, I got link, an bro? idea real quick. Hey, to donate Edson, to the Greater Houston. Can community. you open a new tab and go to thepeellive.com? 
We're gonna post these links yeah, onto the PO Live. There you go. Yeah. And then you go can here. just click you're the links yeah, instead of having to try to figure off, out what the hell he's trying to read off of the <laughs> mic over here. It didn't even have the double 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 redcross.com. Anyway. Um, this is, this is like, what wow. happens when, when I'm gone for when we're gone for like two weeks. Oh man, you've missed so much dragon. Uh, exactly, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So the Texas Derby. So Dallas yeah. looked like crap again, other than the first well, three goals. But you know, I mean, it looked like they were the strongest team at first. Um, well, at least you know what? We, we, had, we had chances. We had. We chances. did have we plenty had of chances. chances. They had a yeah, good absolutely. period where they looked the stronger team, but I think overall that match was 50-50 by the end of the match. Which yes. I mean, it, it is it is said by the scoreline, of course, but. It wasn't like they dominated the entire match, and they can't blame that they were exhausted or anything. No. I mean, we were the ones coming in. Well, they, uh, they too, but we were coming in on a half game, week, you know, half week game. Yeah. Expecting oh, we traveled we were, at that point, we were, and we were still expecting to play Saturday at that yeah. point. Mm. Um, so, you know, that, that, you know, I just, I look at how they played that match, and I have to question, and, and actually, I haven't watched them play multiple matches now, I have to question where their heart is. You know, they don't seem to want it this year. I mean, no. they, they want it early, but then it's kind of like the Dynamo last year, right? The Dynamo last year had the same problem. They were all fire and, you know, and intensity in the first 45, 75 minutes and then just died down in the last 15. That's Dallas in a nutshell this year. Well, let's 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 analyze this real fast because Dallas holds themselves well, on a pedestal. Well, they suck, but, you know. Yeah, they, they hold themselves <laughs> on a pedestal because nobody could stop Dallas last hey, year. Hey, you keep saying no, Dallas, year, but there's not I, a team in I Dallas. Like this I, hey, I'm sorry, Frisco. I, I like this guy. He <laughs> said it in a nutshell. Fuck Dallas. But, yes. but, their we, supporters we say group. Duck Fallis here. Their, their, Fallis. their supporters <laughs> group gets a pass for for the rest of the year. The team does not. The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yes, the team does not. <laughs> well, they get a pass until we have to face them again, potentially in the playoffs, and then they lose that pass for 90 minutes, and then they'll get it after that. <laughs> now, I, 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 will say, I will say the last two goals from, from Frisco were, were some gorgeous ones. I mean, that. Well, they were. That Arudi volley was incredible. Oh. Uh, can, can we talk uh, about that? Was pretty nice. Can we talk that about goal how was not that good? It was a dribbler. It just was bad. But it was, it was yeah. It was but when bad you hit it off the volley board. that far out, that's pretty incredible. But it had no mustard on it, so dude. Can what we bounce? Get, what? It had a bounce. That through, yeah, it had a bounce, yeah, had so it made it to the goal. Tyler. That yeah, was what absolutely. happened. It's it, it was just that the and defender didn't the come out on him, which is part of the reason why Tyler Derrick was so pissed off at his defense. Can we? Oh yeah, absolutely. Talk about minute number one. Because I know we were oh, we were here oh. we were we were closing up oh, you know we yes. were packing up our equipment <laughs> and we walk in and we're like holy shit I it's was the one f- nothing so, so no no to clarify I was the first one through the door and I look up at the TV and I see one nothing Dynamo and my first gut reaction is oh they're showing a replay of something you know from like a previous match yeah and then I see the team all huddled together celebrating and I'm like that's this match first minute what the hell did I miss <laughs> so I turn around to you guys immediately and I'm like one nothing one nothing and you guys are like no way because <laughs> if you recall two weeks ago Sean was sitting up here and said we were gonna score a goal in the first five minutes of the match but I think what yes. I think what Although made I said it, at least not you Vicente, did say at least but, but yes to be my credit hey, I was think still what a made it even crazier goal. was who scored that goal <laughs> Vicente. You know what? In the last two matches, he has come on tremendously. He has looked as good as he has looked for the Dynamo all season. And wasn't he rested? Yes. He was rested in Vancouver. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he Dallas stayed back game. behind yeah. for Vancouver. Uh, we will get into we that t- <laughs> tidbit of info. Oh boy, that is uh, yeah, something we'll else for down. sure. So yeah, yeah it was, we'll let you break that. Down. It was him and Rico and Kubo, of course, and uh, you know they stayed behind to rest. And uh, it showed. I think I do think Rico looked more rested than he, excuse me, than he had prior to that match. Um, and I do feel like Vicente definitely looked like he needed that rest. I mean, like I said, I mean he came out and started. It looked as good as any other player on that pitch. Yeah. And I I have nothing more to say. The fact that he played as good as he did. Every time he match. comes onto that pitch, he seems to bring some new life to that team and some different energy. And I did not expect him to start, though. I, I did well, either. I mean, yeah, but None when, you're, when, you're, playing, when Although you're playing three games... Though, I want it you know, to be that. known, I want it to be known that both of you, when you looked at that lineup, what was your <laughs> reaction? Whoa, well, shit. I don't think that it was... What was my was... reaction? Hey, guys, give it a chance. Thank well, you. I think I think officially after that match now... I, I cannot say anything against Wilmer. I, I just, hey, I can't. And for the record on that, we were not the only ones. Brian and Eddie were both scratching their head on that. Yeah. Team. Yeah, I know. Um, but, Boy, they're uh, sure eating those words, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we ain't up, complaining Eddie? by any means. What's no, up, Eddie? Eddie? Yeah. Uh, so, to, to break it down, we did have Vicente Sanchez with the assist from uh, from Kubo in the first minute, uh, making it one nothing early. 
and it took Dallas to or right before halftime, uh, in the 45th minute exactly, for um. Go ahead and tell me his name. Tesho Akindele. Tesho Akindele. With uh, with the guy who spent most of the match on his back, uh, Barrios. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Barrios spends the entire match on his knees. Sonic, oh. the wannabe Jesse Zardes. Dang. No, I think Jossie dives less than Barrios, actually. Barrios I was just saying that. I got a hairdo, but all right. Oh, well, yeah. that too. You know. um, and then uh, right before right before the whistle blew, uh, Figueroa scored. Oh, that, uh, that the, goal? That, that goal, was, goal pretty. was a pretty goal. And I just, I literally, we were all both up there, and I was just like, I have no problem with that goal going in because it was that good of a goal. Like I feel yeah. bad the Dynamo defense had to give it up, but yep. that was a picture perfect goal. I, it was wow. That's all I gotta say about that. That was nominated for goal of the week too. Um, it should have been. It was. It was, it, it was a great goal. It probably it probably won it too. I didn't see the winner, but right. well, yeah. with those two goals at that point, Sean and I, and I think you were still upstairs at that point. We're like, uh, well, I think Josh went downstairs almost immediately following that second. Oh, goal. I was very so, upset. I like at very, halftime, very I, think I was also halftime, and I think he was going downstairs to go get like a drink or something. Very angry, probably yeah. to drown his sorrows. Oh no, absolutely. Well, to 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 put it, you know, it was it was two one going into the half, and at that point, it was well, it was shit. But it was still a match. Well, it yeah, was still it was still, yeah, it was still game you know, on. I, and it was just um, like, now, okay, we I remember come out, at that you know? point I was saying, you know, just come out strong with that same intensity mm-hmm. you came out with in the first, you know, first 15 minutes of the match and show them that you're not going to back down. And then we come out of halftime and we give a goal up in like six minutes after halftime yeah. blows. And I'm just like, oh, God, here we go. Well, then coming out of the half in the 51st minute, you, the did, you did have a Rudy that scored. A dribbler of a goal that should have never gone in. It shouldn't have. But at that point, that was one of those moments where you're like, uh, well, we're not coming home with the cannon now. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, we had to suffer that was 20 very, minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes of heartache. Oh, and that was the worst 20 minutes of the it match, was, too. It was. But oh. Kubo turned things around uh, in the 71st minute with the assist from Kyoto, and that sparked a totally different team. Because after that goal, they had probably, what would you say, about five, six chances that they could have yeah, definitely brought right. new life Easily. to the team after that. Yeah. Um, well, we which you know, given you they, know, you're still down a goal. You need to Dallas had made the defensive subs. They made two defensive subs, and Houston made three attacking subs. No, two attacking subs because mm. they brought on a defender, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't know. Can you show me the subs real quick? Um, Carson says Kevin Garcia looked extremely good, which he did. All attacking. Oh yeah, they were all attacking. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, Kyoto Martinez and Mendoza off the bench. Uh, what you know? What actually sparked it was as soon as Tomas was subbed in in the 70th minute, his supply to to Kyoto to oh. Kubo. The turn from Kyoto. It was just one good that God. turn, and we the both turn called it from out. Kyoto Justin just, and I sitting up there, yeah. we both called that out. Like, oh my God, that was what just a the turn. whole dynamic yeah. of the last 20 minutes yep. of that match yep. changed from that point on, yep. from the 70th minute on. Yep. And you could tell Dallas was gassed at that point. Yep. It was a hot. It was a hot day too. So yeah. I mean, you know. Um, and then Kubo Good. scoring again in uh, what is that the eighty sixth minute? Yep. Uh, again. Uh, oh, <laughs> I have never heard Kings Court be that loud. Oh, it was incredible! Oh, can I? It can was, I just it was say one of the best feelings ever? Can yeah. Can I just say that atmosphere? The Dynamo did an amazing job putting yes. that on for some reason at the last and, minute. And AJD was suspended for that game. He was at Kings Court. Yeah. With the with, you know with the Dynamo fans and that was awesome. Just taking pictures around the can. We had the cannon in the house too. If it if it was, wasn't yeah. if it wasn't so loud in there, I would have tried to get an interview with him. Oh my but god! No, yeah, I there was him, no said, hearing yourself. Uh, I asked him a r- couple quick thoughts before we go uh, go to break. I asked him. I said, you know, how hard is this to watch? Oh. You know, being here and they're up there. He said, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I feel for the guy. I mean, you know, I'm glad that the Dynamo drew, but you could just see it in him. He was he was hurting to see what was going on until we tied it up. Then he you could see the relief on his light yeah. eyes, like oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go to break uh, again. Check out the descriptions in the video. It's gonna be posted on the PO Live dot com as well. Um, uh, for for ways that you can give back to the community through Red Cross, through Greater uh, the Greater Houston Community Fund, and um, for Ben recovers. recovers. Correct. There you go. Look, I'm learning. Uh, and I guess we're going to go ahead and send it a break. Bingo, bango, bongo. You're listening to us live on YouTube. There you go. And later on, Delayed via SoundCloud, Google Play Music.
and iTunes. Francisco, we'll get to that as soon as we get back from break. What are we getting to? Uh, the foul on Remick. Oh. Yep. Oh. We're going to break. Well, we're back. we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. You are listening to another edition of The Peel. Uh, Sean, where can they find us before you dive into your segment? Where can they find The Peel? Well, yes. They can find The Peel on YouTube. <laughs> they can find The Peel on Facebook at The Peel 2005 and all the other preceding stuff. They can find The Peel on Twitter at The Peel 05 or 05 if you speak that language. Um, and you can also find The Peel on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash The Peel 2005. And you can also find us on thepeellive.com. Uh, Francisco, that foul on Dylan, because uh, you caught us right before we were about to go to break, was absolute garbage, and it should have been. I I would almost see it as a red. Oh, so I mean, it was brutal. The guy got laid out. Yeah, it was bad. The ref missed it. I actually thought we were going to see a VAR overrule on that one, but again, it wasn't called. Would have been like the third or are fourth week. About, are you talking about the yeah. last tackle that Dylan had made? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right outside no, the box? On no, Dylan. no, The one on that Dylan. he had a foul against, like, that that was uh, Dallas did against him. And it, I think it was Barrios, actually, that mm-hmm. committed the foul. God, I hate him. Oh, my God. It was a terrible tackle. At, like, head to the hand to the head level of, like, aggression. And Dillard was livid about that. Like, because, he was, like, yeah. oh, he, he fronted the ref pretty hardcore. And because I was like, the, Dylan, keep it cool. Keep it cool, man. Keep it cool. There was, there was one foul towards the end of the game. Uh, yeah, right, at, right about, at the edge yeah, of the box. That Dallas was all upset. They so didn't to get clarify VAR, that. But that's outside of the box. <laughs> Correct. There's no the VAR foul took that. place outside of the box. They cannot review a foul outside of the box. It would not have resulted in a, car, in a red card. It would not have resulted in a PK. So, in other words, Dallas, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> you take that. I agree guy. with that statement. So, Sean, you take, it you take that VAR and yeah. you would love it. Yeah. This is your spotlight. Go ahead and uh, tell us our tidbit of information <laughs> that came out recently <laughs> so it's, it's been confirmed by multiple sources at this point uh, and I'd, I've heard rumors thank you Josh that potentially Glenn Davis may have spoken about this on his podcast no, I don't night. know if it's true or not let's not say that uh, well I'm going to say it so make sure <laughs> Let it go. no no hold on so wait, make sure if, if you don't listen to his show make sure you listen to his show I'm sure he'll love that plug uh, yeah. you know soccer matters I'm sure he loves that um, but what we found out, and, and this was not, I didn't have to do any digging, which was unsurprising to me when I found out what it was, but I got a, I got a DM from somebody who's one of my sources that they were like, hey, man, I got some juicy info for you. And I'm like, okay. And I'm you know, sitting at the Fort Bend County Joint Information Center in a tent. And I'm like, all right, well, hold on. Let me go outside my tent and call you or have you call me. <laughs> so he calls me. Or no, he gave me his number, so I called him. And it was like, it was immediate. Like I went outside immediately. I was like, okay, juicy info. I got to know. And uh, so he proceeded to kind of, you know, we talked a little bit, and then he told me what was going on. And I went, well, that's not really all that surprising, but it's really important that this gets out. And if we are the first one to get this out, it's really important that we do that. Um, so there were three players that did not make the trip to Vancouver. There, of course, was Vicente. There, there was Rico, and mm-hmm. there was Kubo. Mm-hmm. One of those three players did not make the trip because they missed a flight to Vancouver. Now, I don't think I need to say who this player was or is because it comes as no surprise. But Kubo Torres, I am calling you out (laughs) right now. (laughs) Stop playing the little pansy 13-year-old I'm an immature ass card and grow the hell up. You are a leader on this team, and it's time you started acting like it. This is not Liga MX. We take soccer seriously up here. It's time to grow up, man time to grow up it's one of those things you know he wants to be a leader he wants to be the face of a franchise but if you're pulling stunts like that what gives you the right to even feel like that oh man i can tell you right now it's hurting your trade value if you do want to go somewhere and, and i think that right there because um, i had somebody ask me that you know that, that knew about this um asked me why this hadn't gotten out like why i thought it hadn't gotten out I think that's the exact reason right there the club is being trying to be careful with it because it lowers his trade value it lowers his transfer value but the fact of the matter is the guy has done this repeatedly. This is not his first time missing a flight for a match. I'm going to repeat that. This is not his first offense missing so, a flight for a match. You know, I was telling you, it was if you want to be a leader, you should be the first one at the airport and the last one of the team on the plane to make sure your crew is there. That's right. Lead by example, That's not with your words. That's what leaders do. Lead by example, not with your words. I mean... 
at this point, and and I'm I'm sorry if the Dynamo want to say anything about it, but they need to move on from him. Uh, I think I they think want to. I'm going to give them credit. I think they want to, but they also have to wait for a deal to materialize. They can't just dump yeah, the guy. But now, because where it's does five this? Year, it's a five year contract that he's under, correct? Uh, the terms are never disclosed for the number of years, but I can tell you that he's down probably. Sorry, you had a beer in your. Or you had a bug. In you your had a beer in your bug. Had a beer yeah. in my bug. <laughs> uh, he's got two to three years left. That's what I can say about that. Okay, but anyways. my thing is, is you know, you want to be up here. You want to be talked about up here. You pulling something like that is only going to hinder you even more. You can't do that. So let, you know, let me throw another kind of Kubo, you suck moment. <laughs> um. Well, hold on. Alex wants to say does a player get penalized for this? Alex, he wasn't on the he wasn't on the roster in Vancouver. Yeah, he. I mean, he didn't travel at all, so he missed the flight. The club, you know, elected to keep him here in Houston for a match. And if I'm not mistaken, he he started the Dallas match. But I think if that hadn't have been a shortened week, I think he wouldn't have started that Dallas match. Um, I mean, he did get subbed off for Morrow, and Morrow looked fantastic. So <laughs> yeah, maybe we see Morrow start this weekend, and Kubo can suck it. Now, do you think? Because let's oh, face it, well, in hey, the second I have half. A point in your, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> hold, hold your point. Can you, can okay. you remember yeah, it? Are you're you sure? Good. Yeah. You're sure you're getting old there. I don't know. Shut up. So <laughs> it's important to remember Kubo wants to be a star on the Mexican national team. You miss not a like flight, buddy, you, you are not making, uh, you're not going to be a star on the Mexican national team no matter how good you are. Yes. My, yes, Russell my, Marquez. My people. <laughs> well, he didn't miss flights, though. No, he didn't miss flights. He just fronted a drug organization. <laughs> well, yeah, but that didn't come out until after <laughs> he, he was he done with the yeah. team. I mean, come on, you know that's you're picking hairs here. I, mean, I know. I'm granted, it is the Mexican national team, but still, I mean, it's it's the reality of the well, situation is he wants to be a leader, f- both for the Dynamo and the Mexican national team. But he's going to pull stunts like this, and he's going to do it over and over and over again, dude. You need to grow up because the fact is your chances are running out very quickly. You've had enough strikes at this point. That I would not be surprised if Wilmer started Morrow every match that he could that Morrow can start. So because we only got five more minutes before we take a take another break. Well, that's or, good. This is the only thing to talk about for that five minutes. So we're good. <laughs> uh, well, we got we got scores from last week. We're not going to do the Texas Derby week um, only because it's so far back now. Yeah, it's uh, like two weeks ago. I do want to ask Edson if you want to bump up here to the mic. Mm. What what do you how do you feel this puts him in a position with the national team now? I, on, I honestly think that uh, if it was going to be difficult for him to get earn a spot in the Mexican national team, if the federation finds out about this, which I'm pr- pretty sure they are, it's going to make it almost impossible for him to get noted by Juan Carlos Osorio. Oh, yeah. Well, if they weren't going to find out about it before, they're going to find out about it now. Uh, so just, uh, you know, not to <laughs> totally go away from Kubo real quick, but hope, hey, if you're here live, show. if you're here live at 8, yeah, that would be awesome yeah. if they were watching our show. What's up, mi selección MX? We heard the nitty gritty on Kubo. <laughs> That's right. Um, if you're here live at 8th Wonder and you have a desire to go to the Dynamo match on Saturday, they're playing Colorado Rapids, which means you get to see Timmy Howard in goal. Uh, feel free to come say hi to my friend Edson over here running the laptop and producing, I guess, is what we call that. And uh, your name will be entered into a drawing for two tickets to the Dynamo match, and I can promise you these are pretty nice tickets to the Dynamo two match. Two free tickets. All you gotta do is put your. All name you gotta in the do hat. is say hi to Edson <laughs> and put your name in the hat. We will do the drawing shortly, and well, shortly being like forty minutes from now, but we'll do the drawing. And we've only had one person enter, so trust me, your chances are very, very high right now. Yeah. Hey, the two people leaving. Oh, they're not listening. Do they, you want two free about, tickets to the to the you. Houston Dynamo match? All you gotta do is put your name in the hat. Put your name in a hat. That's all you got to do. Uh, they're Astros fans. They're not Dynamo. <laughs> they're not Dynamo fans. They're Astros, man. We're, we're trying. His hat. Right over there. <laughs> get, if they're not going to stay here, get their uh, Twitter handle and or their phone number. Or yes. their email address. One of yes. the three. Hey. One of the three. Wow, we had a bunch of people come oh, say hi. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Hey. Sweet. All right. All right. Uh, we don't feel so lame. Do you, okay, yes. so back to my thought before I forget. Wow, that's it's, more it's people, too. slipping out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's why I made sure you were going to remember. <laughs> so, um, do you think his performance in the second half of the, the derby was him trying to tell... Chat message. Um, Sorry. Not to de- nope, you lost your train of thought. <laughs> yeah, he lost his train of thought. <laughs> yes. I ruined it for you. Do we think that Kubo's do, performance do you think, in the second do you th- half... Do you think it was a way for him to pretty much tell Wilmer and the organization, I'm sorry? No. 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 It would be different no, if this was a one-time thing, but this is a repeat offense. When it becomes yes. a repeat offense, yeah. it is a habit. It is something that is ingrained into your psyche. And you know what? 
He didn't have these problems with Chivas. He began having these problems when he went to Mexico and played for Chivas Guadalajara and for Cruz Azul, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. We do appreciate the clutch goals in Dallas, but... <laughs> we do. But, but we'll also got, be happy to send your ass away. Thanks. We've got about we'll three minutes. Yeah. Do you think that... Um, oh, and also, if you're listening on YouTube, feel free to send Edson a YouTube chat message, and he'll get your name in the drawing as well, yes. just so it's clear. Yes. We want uh, you to also have a chance. Right we, now we, we have Blue you. Fan asking to put his name in there. Alex put his name in there, and Francisco. Dude, dude it's like a real drawing yeah, this week. Yeah, yeah. Hey. It's legit. Woo. All right. We appreciate everybody. Actually, we do. Yeah. This is actually going to be a contest. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, the only Last deal is <laughs> the only deal is you have to come out and listen to us every week. No, that's <laughs> not. No, no. That's not the real deal. <laughs> no. And we would love for you to do yeah, that. If we, you do, we're okay with we, you we, doing we, that, We will though. appreciate yeah. that. Yes. Um, we're here every Wednesday at 7. Your dog is awesome, that's by the way. That's a shameless plug, but I like their it. Their dog is awesome, by the way. Yeah, their dog I is awesome. I love their dog. Their dog is cute. Oh. That's okay. I'd be scared of Brutus too. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask Francisco before we go to break. Well, he just looks. He looks mean. He's not mean. He just looks it. You know. So it's not his he, fault. He's just a dog. He, my dog is the dog biggest dog baby you'll ever meet. Yeah, He's but their pushover. dog doesn't know that. Yeah, I know. Anyways, um, so, it's time. Or is it? We got one more question. Do we have a question? Well, Francisco asks. Or Francisco says that he loves Kubo. You're his friend. Okay, Put him so, in his place. Well, okay, oh. so credit. Cre I'm going to give credit to Cisco. Cisco has stuck on the Kuba bandwagon since the first day we transferred him in. No joke. Like, he's been on the Cisco jockstrap that long. And, like, I, I appreciate Cisco, and I'll be honest, Kubo has definitely improved this year in terms of actually playing and being decent. And putting the ball in the net. Yeah, well, you know, it, it happens every once in a while. Um, <laughs> but, my, you know, my biggest thing, Cisco, and this is, this is you know, we'll, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, on Saturday if you actually make the match. By the way, 106 now? Is that what that's going to be? Oh, I hope he makes the match. Oh, well, he's got Corpus stuff to deal with, and uh. Corpus was hit really hard. Which, by the way, shout out to Cisco. His place was okay, but hey, everywhere around him was not. If you can't make this match, we will count as 106 for you. There you go. We'll, there you we'll go. be there, yeah. That's okay. He's missing like five matches in a row, but he doesn't want me to say that out loud. Oh. <laughs> he's taking a vacation type of thing, I think, or something to that effect. I'm totally throwing you under the bus, Cisco, but much love. He, he got, got, his, he got his jersey and was done. Oh, yeah. No, he's like, <laughs> I got 100. I'm good. Actually, no joke. Like, he said that, you know, his goal was to get to 100 because he never thought he'd reach it, and then he reached 100, and he was like, okay, this is really cool. I'm probably not going to reach much farther. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, well, at least you made That's 100. Awesome. No, I'd be so, but, but seriously, though, back to Kubo. Cisco, the reason why this is important is, it, again, if it was only a one-time thing, that's a totally different scenario. I can write it off as a mistake. But, you know, it's kind of like when the Texans had that quarterback, uh, Ryan Mallett, that overslept twice. Who? He slept past his alarm <laughs> twice. Yeah, that guy. Um, and, you know, the Texans released him. Well, or traded him. I mean, that it's the same type of thing, Cisco. I, I hate to say it, but the player has a habit, and he's not getting over it here. He needs to go to a team. He needs to go to a club in another league that is going to put the reins on him tight and not let him. You know, the leash is going to be very, very short. Yeah. Uh, but with that what said, time are they having to wake up? Uh, break time, guys. Actually, well, no, not, not break time. Depends on the me. flight. Uh, so we do have. Can you switch that? Hey, can you switch that tab so we can see what the show? Hey, you personal. Oh, oh never sorry, mind. Yeah. It's too late. He already did it. You're slow. <laughs> He's got like three miles. Uh, All right, it's time for the scores. Yeah, from two weeks from two weeks. Are no, we're just gonna we're just gonna do this past week. Uh, only because there's 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 a lot to go over, um, so we're we're gonna skip skip the Texas Derby week uh, and just His go straight to this last mean. weekend. Um, the games were pretty shitty. Let's be honest. Um, New England ended up beating uh, Orlando City, who is in a horrible situation now, uh, losing four nothing. So before we go past the score line for Orlando City, it's important to note that they had a player today that was a r arrested for domestic violence and running uh, domestic violence for beating up his girlfriend, fiance, wife, some, yeah, wife. Uh, and and you know, they 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 seem to have a problem in Orlando City. Maybe that's where Kubo needs to go. Yeah, they they would more, be a pretty good fit over there, wouldn't had, he? They've had more arrests than yeah, uh, when was from last month. Yeah, they've they they're, they're, you know what? MLS needed a team like the Dallas Cowboys, and they're just filling that role. That's exactly hey, how that's I you, explained it. They're you, the Cowboys Justin. without hey, the that's titles. That's for you, Justin. That's for you. Um, uh, good. If you want to read the next one. The hilarious thing, though, hold on. The hilarious thing, though, is they have family man Dom Dwyer. So you know, I guess everything's all good, right? <laughs> Everything balances out. He's the uh, he's the Tony Romo. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! That gets Except, one of those. Well done. Wow. Except right, he's actually good. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> All right, Josh, your score. Uh, yeah, you know, Montreal Impact hosted Chicago Fire, losing one nothing off a of Bastion Swine stagger goal. 
Impact um, went down to ten men. Yes. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah, that happened. Montreal yes. strong. I don't know who got who got ejected. But. Uh, uh, well, we already read. Oh no, no we this didn't. Was read a this wild one. one, man. So uh, yet again, Dallas can't seem to muster up the balls to win. So they uh, drew New York, who they were hosting, by the way. They keep hosting matches and not winning them. Who'd have thought? 2-2 <laughs> um, two -two in a quote-unquote barn burner. Uh, uh, Dallas did come back, but let's be honest. I mean, you know, Dallas should have beaten Red Bulls at home. It's like they don't like their stadium anymore or something. I don't know. Hey, that Sasha um, question goal was... It was something else, man. It was awesome. Well, was I mean, like you've said before, if they lose in Frisco, does anybody really see it? You know, I, uh, there is this other point, though, right? And I've said this before as well. Dallas are having to make up a lot of matches in a very short period of time because they had those two matches in hand, which ultimately ends up being three matches in hand. Well, actually, it's one now that the Dynamo have skipped a week. But they're having to make up all these matches. That's rough on a team, and mm -hmm. you're seeing the result right now. And I said that they were going to struggle when they hit this run of matches, and it's coming true, man. I, it, it, it's wonderful to see. Actually, now, uh, and now Josh, they actually don't even have a game in hand on us anymore. We're both at no, yeah, because they've yeah. caught back up. That's what I'm yeah, saying. They've had yeah, all those extra games. Up, yeah. So, yeah. Josh, you want to read that next score? from? Uh, yeah, and then LA Al Al Galaxy scoring three against Colorado in L.A. Two of so the that's gonna make you. <laughs> that's got to make you feel good about the <laughs> Dynamo really match, though. I do have I do have some great stats uh, coming back out of the or into the next segment about the Colorado match. Okay, cool. uh, I guess I'll throw that out there now as a teaser. They have not won on the road. Nope. Colorado has not won on the Since road. Since July 4th. No, reading. they haven't no. won on the road They haven't won year. a single game on the road? No, they've Zero. gotten results Milch. on the road, but they haven't won on the road. Correct. Mm. They are okay. worse than the Dynamo on the road. I, that's all i got to say about that. I think they're the worst team in the league, actually. They are. They yeah. are the only ones winless on the road, I believe. There's, uh, no, no, I take that back. There is one other team winless. Real quick, before we go to break, make sure you, you check out it? the description in our video and on the peel doc, or the peellive.com. And if for, it's not up right now on the peellive.com, we will make sure it goes up tonight, yes. and it will be up when this uh, when the podcast goes live on SoundCloud and YouTube. Yes, because I will post those links in the description in SoundCloud, The other too. two places, Google Play Music and I, uh, iTunes. Yes. Um... Be sure to jump on there. Donate a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar, five dollars. Every bit counts. Yes. And if you don't donate to one of those links, feel free to jump into JJ Watts. Yes. Actually, I think he took it down already. No, it's still up until the ninth or something like that. He's up to like twenty million. Yeah, now. he's over twenty million. Isn't yeah. like twenty-seven million because oh HEB donated five million today. Go HEB. <laughs> go go HEB. Go JJ. Uh, so, when we but get feel back free to. Break, what I was going to say is feel free to donate to his to his cause too. Yes. It's a great cause, and he's making. You know, he's not making money, but he's. He's definitely bringing in tons of money, and he has committed to making sure that that money goes to people here in Houston that are in need. And I don't know about you, but I trust JJ when he says something like that. Yeah. Uh, so we will go ahead and take a, about a two-minute break, uh, get up, stretch, readjust, um, and then uh, we'll be back to talk about the Colorado match. Are we? Oh, hey, uh, there we go. Hey, we're back. Uh, if you are here at Eighth Wonder, uh, this is the Peel, by the way. If you're here at, the, at Eighth <laughs> Wonder uh, and you're hanging out and you want to go to the Dynamo match and you have not already signed up uh, for the drawing, please come up and say hi to Edson right over there. Uh, he will take your name down. You get two entries in our drawing for two Dynamo tickets for Saturday's match against Colorado. Yay, Tim Howard is in town. Yay. Secretary. Uh, also, if you're listening live on YouTube, hey, first of all, thank you very much for listening live. Second of all, feel free to shoot a YouTube chat message uh, to Edson, and he will add your name to the drawing as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Last time I saw, we were up to like ten listeners. That's fantastic. Hey, yeah, you guys I'm telling rock. you, the more we do this yeah. thing regularly, we're like we get into a pattern yes. here. People yeah, recognize, awesome. yeah. hey, there's a yeah. pattern to this. And also, credit to Eighth Wonder, their internet is staying up and has stayed up for the last two shows. Yeah. So we appreciate Eighth Wonder, and we definitely want to give them a beautiful shout out. Eighth Wonder, you guys are the awesome boss. Cheers to you guys. Yes. Cheers. 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 Also, it's a great time for um, cheers for. For the rest of the month of September. Justin doesn't know what to do with his cup. Um, well, it's because it, it popped on my mind. Um, if oh, we yeah. come out here, we would appreciate, number one, if you came out here and watched the show. But every or $1 of every pint sold at Eighth Wonder is going to Hurricane Relief. Absolutely. So come out here. I mean, all you have to do is drink awesome. a beer. Yes. Thank yes. you. All you have to do is drink a beer. Pay for a beer. And $1 of that is going to Relief. Absolutely. It's, it's pretty easy. That's the best so. The best way that's to donate, really. Well, not the yeah, best way to donate. Yeah. It's one of the better ways to donate, though. Buy Francisco a beer and donate asks, money. And that's probably the best tasting. Francisco beer ever asks did. us if we've ever eaten an orange peel. Thanks, mm. Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> did you really have to repeat that on the air? <laughs> that's a personal question. I choose not to answer it on air. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into the Colorado match. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're probably going to have to tell Carson he's going to have to hold on. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're. Yeah. So, 
I mean, hey, we could do. Oh, I guess we did plug that part, didn't we? Yeah, Damn we did it. plug it. Okay. It won't um, be that long. We're, we got <coughs> eight minutes. We don't have much to talk about. Okay. Well, out of 27 matches all time, I'm going to do my thing. Okay. Uh, 10 wins, 10 losses, 7 draws. Hey, Josh, negative, I'm going to go to the restroom real quick. Yeah, he's going to be like five minutes long. I'm not going to be that I'm bad. Just kidding. Um, hey, at least we don't have Houston Hotel anymore. <laughs> dude. Dude. Dude, some of us I care about. My, I love my local soccer teams. Some of us man, care about those local on. soccer teams. You know how much? You know how much feedback I've gotten back hey, for that? Hey, hey you know, no, you know how much I, time I, we're I, wasting when you don't have a lot you. of time? Okay, uh, and that was all time. Uh, just MLS, twenty-five matches. We fare a little better. Uh, eight wins, ten losses, seven, uh, seven draws, negative four. At home, completely different story. Eleven matches, five wins, two losses, four draws, plus five goal difference. Hmm. Um, our, our last meeting on Col or versus Colorado, which was this season, July 2nd, uh, it was a 3-1 loss in Commerce City. Excellent. Yes. Uh, it was Not back really. No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was Hairston tough. scored that two. Sucked. That sucked. Uh, we did have a goal from Kubo in, the, in, in uh, uh, stoppage time right before half. Mm. So. Kubo. Hey. Uh, Kubo. Last home meeting, October 9, 2016, <laughs> here, we lost 3-2. to Hmm. Oh, yes. I remember that. Mm. Yeah, that was well, when Colorado was soaring, though. It is, it is time to turn those fortunes around. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. how the table What else you got hurt. for me, Justin? I know uh, you got more. They sit 11th right now in the Western Conference. 11th? In tw yes, 22 In the points. West. How many teams are in the West, Justin? Uh, 11. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Last place uh, in the Western they, Conference. They sit 16, si or 6, 16, and 4 with a negative 17 yeah. goal difference. Ouch. Um, ouch here's ouch. what helps us out. On the road, they are 0, 11, and 2. So how's Colorado liking that trade they made early in the season where they traded away uh, Sam Cronin? Sam Cronin. And, and, uh, and, probably uh, not at all. Yeah, um, I'm thinking they're regretting that trade. On, a, on another tidbit of information, yeah, uh, since since Master, uh, Mastroeni. Mastro on, uh, Pablo Mastroeni. Okay, Mastroini. there you go. Since he was fired on August 15th. Since mustache. Uh, mm -hmm. They are 0, oh, Four and zero. Yeah, no, they, they were actually a decent team under him, and you know they just were struggling. And I think that was player related to having to make a lot of changes because players kept getting injured or not playing well. And you know Pablo was doing what Pablo does, and he was doing a good job with it. They were also. And good then they thought that they thought too. they were going to be better without Pablo, and boy, are they wrong. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, and I'm not surprised. Their interim coach is crap too. Actually, he's more crap than Pablo. <laughs> I would have taken Pablo as an assistant, although I like Davey Arnault as our assistant. Yeah, Davey, Davey Arnault is fantastic. Yeah. So what is Shout the out team? To Davey Arnault. Also, if we, Colorado, correct? what he, is it? Uh, no, he didn't. No. Corey, no, Corey Roken from the Chronicle no. tweeted out and did an article. We have to, we have to score what two up? goals to, to tie our season or single season goal record? Yeah, it's two goals. Two goals. I and by the way, Corey, being an issue. I, I just want it to be said though. If we don't break that record this year, Corey... It's his fault. You, and I've already tweeted this out. It is 100% your fault, Corey, for jinxing the team. Not only that, I will still show you love for the fact that you had the balls to do it, but at the same time, dude, you're a reporter. You should know better. <laughs> Just wait till they do it. It's only two goals, okay? It's not going to take more than a couple matches. And it's almost like one of those things, like when you're watching a football broadcast, and this quarterback's never thrown in or hasn't thrown an interception in the, the last five play, games. He next play, he an interception. <laughs> or, or the, the, you know, the whole uh, no hitter jinx. Don't yeah, say oh, the yeah. words no hitter or perfect game. You don't mention that. You just don't. It's, it's just it's shut up. You know, it's soccer. It's <laughs> soccer taboo to yes. mention those sorts of things. Um. So what do we have to do to walk out of BBVA with a win? Not that it's going to be hard. Okay. Start tomorrow. Wait, 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 no. Uh, I, yeah. I got this. All right. Okay, and, and Sean. I guarantee you my prediction is going to come true. Are you ready? We have to score more goals than they score. <laughs> if we do that, we will win. I guarantee it. Is that how there you played? go. There you well, guys okay, go. Okay, wait. There's, there's a caveat to that. that the there's Sean there is with a fresh the take. There is a caveat to that. If we score own goals, that doesn't. That formula does not work. <laughs> No, but seriously, what what do who do hey, we have to hey, shut hey, down? Hey, what do we hey, actually it's have been to working do? for DC United? We have to shut down Baji, Baji. Yes. We have to, um, and we have Harrison. to, Her and Hairston, and we have to, we have to exploit our wing play, um, and you know really leverage Elise and Kyoto as best we can. And, and even if Wanger is starting or Vin Vicente is starting, if Vicente starts again, I will be more than pleased with that at this point. Um, and, you know, we just have to exploit our wings. Our wingers are some of the best in the league by a, quite a large margin at this point, and it's fantastic. Um, and we also, I think, you know, this might be the match we see Tomas maybe get his start. I would hope so. That'd be awesome. So, real do quick, you, for, do, hold do you on. Think, do you Josh. think Elise gets the start? Elise or Kyoto? One of the two. I, I, you kind of hit on it earlier. I think one of them is going to sit at least for the first yeah. half, maybe a little longer. 
I think Wilmer's also, you know, he, he's proven to be very cognizant of players' uh, uh, physical health in terms of how tired they are. And having just played for Honduras yesterday, um, that's a short week to begin with anyways. You know, you're talking four days rest between matches and then travel because it was in Honduras. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say exactly. Boney also made the travel, and so did Beasley. I think we might see some subs this match, and as we know, when Wilmer makes subs and does it on a large scale, we seem to play okay. Well, let, let's hope for my fantasy team that Albert gets the, gets the story. So, Sean, before we get Josh's take, uh, what is your prediction? Hold on, I'm going to let Josh give his prediction first. I, I have I'm sorry, my prediction. I was reading, I'm sorry, I was reading What's your reading. prediction, Josh, for this my match? My prediction? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, four one. Mm. I'm gonna say four nothing. Okay, so what? Ooh. What's yeah. your while while Sean's talking, thinking about it? Talking about it. Uh, what What is your take? What, what What do we have to do to walk out of BBVA with a win? Don't start Kubo. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, no. I mean, I'm he's being serious. serious. Not, I, no, I'm no, I'm not being serious because <laughs> even if you start Kubo, I mean, we, we could still possibly Kubo, walk yeah. out with a win. Kubo does bring uh, quite a bit, but yeah, still. He, he really does. Um, no, I mean, you know, honestly, it's just like he said, exploit the wingers. Um, I, I really would like to see Alberto or Kyoto get a start, but as you go back to saying, you know, tiredness and like tiredness, you know, all that stuff. Um, I want to see us just control the ball this game, you know, at, on our home, you and know, control the ball and walk out with a win. And that's Tomas. Yeah, that's Tomas. Totally, one hundred percent Tomas. I, 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 I'm, I'm all one hundred percent on starting Tomas this game. I think this is a perfect game to give him a start because you're yeah. playing against you're playing at home against the worst team in the league. And it shouldn't get ninety. <laughs> we should stay below ninety. For Saturday as well. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah and the weather is going to be great and everything. You know, I mean, it's it's going to be a lot of goals scored. Your I mean, it's not going to be a very up. big competition yeah. for our team. I, I, I don't want to jinx us guys, but you know, yeah, my phone is blown up right now. Thank, um, thanks everybody tweeting the field. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, we you appreciate guys rock, you, Jeff. Actually. Thank you. We love uh, you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. So. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and give my prediction. Man, I am going to get totally eaten alive for this prediction. Two one Dynamo, and that's a game winner in like the last minute. <laughs> Two minutes. You know what though? I, I'm gonna defend them. I'm, now I don't have the same score line, but the reason I say that is teams tend to play down to their competition, and I feel that the Dynamo have that in their psyche, and I could see them do that. Did you see that first message from Webb? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Thanks, Webb. I can I can see that. I, I can see them being like, "Oh, it's Colorado," and then they're gonna be back on their heels before they know it, and have to come back late. Okay, that's not my take at all. No. I don't think Wilmer is the kind of coach to let his team it's think that way and act that way and play that way. I, I just don't. They haven't done it all season, and they've faced teams that have been strug- struggling. Look at Dallas. Yeah. First minute goal in Dallas. So we oh, got sorry, a, it wasn't in Dallas. It was we're in about Frisco. A, we're about a minute over. Uh, we still got to run through the schedule. Well, it's, it's, no, we don't need to run through the schedule. We can throw those up on the peel yeah. if we need to. we got so games going on tonight. We're skipping too. the schedule. It's okay. okay. We'll skip, we'll the, skip schedule. the schedule. Um, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, it's time. It's time. It's Baji. Uh, we got we got to shut him down. Uh, my prediction. Oh, that's <laughs> not what I was thinking. Was okay. Baji. No. <laughs> I was totally it's lost. It's, it's time for. Carson. Oh, it is time for Carson, but I can't give my take? <laughs> no. Well, you can give your, your take p- while we're calling him. Oh, well. It usually takes 30 seconds to get a hold That's of him. That's true. Especially union, with you. Union fans Especially it's like a 45 seconds. It'll matter. It'll be 45 seconds of you trying to make sure his voice is coming through, make sure our voices are coming through, make sure the stream can hear him, you know. We don't um, test these then, things uh, out beforehand. And and I I'm don't know so. why. I'm thinking 3-2. I, I, I can buy that, too. Yeah, I just, two. I think, I don't. I don't know. I don't see the Dynamo defense cracking two, and I don't see Colorado necessarily giving up three. So I think two. I one think we got right. a pretty full rested back line, you know, especially with HAD. Except coming Beasley. Back. Well, are but, you I mean, are you considering Demick, gonna, Remick I'm to start? Consider, I'm going to consider Remick. I'm going to consider Demick. Yeah. You know what? Okay, real quick before he gets uh, Carson on the phone, I think Remick may need to actually rest this match because the dude is exhausted. Oh, the I dude has been yeah. out there busting his butt in all of these donation things every day, like. Dylan, you, you oh, are okay. a champ. You are definitely yeah, you a rock, champ. Man, yeah. We appreciate it. I come know by, everybody else does, but more, we really appreciate it. Come buy more it. fish for me and then, and then start for us. Come buy more fish <laughs> for me. So we are going to go ahead and get uh, Carson on. Carson. Uh, we will talk about some, some Toro stuff. Toros, Toros, And then we'll Toros. report the U.S. Men's National Hey, team. Edson, would you like to take over for me because you'd like to talk Toros? Hey, what's up, Carson? Hey, Carson. <laughs> Not much. I'm glad you guys are all, all safe and sound. Thank and, you. you know, still, still charismatic and 
a good quality radio. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. hey, man, we appreciate uh, it. quality thank radio. You Carson. Thank you, Carson. <laughs> so, um, uh, what's what's going on with your boys, man? It, it, it's slow, slowly fading away. Playoffs are slowly fading away. Um, last week would have been a nice week to get, you know, at least maybe six points, ideally. Um, you maybe want four, at, you know, the minimum, but. Um, they drew midweek with Timbers 2, or the worst team in the USL, mm. which is never good. And it took a 90-plus minute equalizer from Kai Green. Um, other than that, and then they lose 1-0, you know, at LA Galaxy 2, which, um, again, you know, not ideal. So they're right now 12th in the Western Conference, and it's starting to look more bleak as the days go by. Is there any hope for them this weekend to walk out with a with a decent result? There's always a chance. Um, I would be probably not. Uh, they play Sacramento, and Sacramento is currently in the playoffs, and they're right on the edge of the playoffs. So they're really going to come into ATV Park looking for a good win. Mm. So I would not. I wouldn't put my money on it, but I mean, anything's possible. And uh, Sacramento is also trying to uh, uh, get back from kind of like a slump that they've been having in the past uh, couple of games. I believe they've tied. Uh, they've tied, They've lost like two games uh, out of the last three. It, exactly. Yeah, the Toros are winless in their last five, and mm-hmm. Sacramento is not far behind. the winless in their last four. That just sounds very depressing. Don't worry, we went through that last year. I, yeah, I, I know, and I and I saw everyone tweet that. You know, last year the Toros were were doing great, and everyone was like, "Oh, the Dash or the Dynamo suck." Now. You know, the Dynamo are good and the Toros suck. It's not fun. It's not <laughs> yeah. fun on this side of things. But, I mean, you have to realize that pretty much the the whole, the majority of the reason why the Toros did so well is not only the kind of players that they had last year, which Dynamo took, but they also took, you know, Wilmer Cabrera. I mean, you're talking about an MLS mm-hmm. quality coach in the USL. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Toros were, I believe it was one point away from being number one in the Western Conference. And now you have, uh, you can see a USL level coach, you know, with, uh, and then starting, um, well, not from scratch, but, you know, you have most of the starting lineup gone now. So, not, obviously, there was going to, I knew there was going to be at the beginning of the season, I thought there, there was going to be a difference. I just didn't think it was going to be that big of a difference compared uh, to last season. Yeah, you're exactly right. You, you expect a little bit of a drop off and, um, when you take, you know, Charlie, Mamo, Kevin Garcia, Malky, and then I think Wilmer might even be the biggest loss of all of them. Um, when you take that kind of talent away, um, it really left them with, they're, they're still a good team and they're still good players. But there's not anybody wildly, like, noteworthy or somebody an opposing team really has to be concerned with. Uh, um, which isn't great. Obviously, Luca Terra is one of them. Though. Yeah. Not only that, and I we've mentioned it uh, before. You know, um, another, and, and I'll mention it you know, again. It's the lack of somebody that a true leader in the field, anywhere in in the in the whether it's in the back line, which really needs someone uh, the, to step up and be a leader, know how to position the rest of the players, and. Uh, because we had something with that with uh, with Charlie Ward. I mean, he, uh, not only was he, uh, I thought he was a, a, a good leader, you know, uh, dealing with what he had, but he was not. But he was also, you know, the distributor. And now we lost that, and we're starting to want to get that back. Now that Lucatero is is starting to get more minutes, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a long process. And I think it's uh, it's too late for at least for this season. Yes, we are mathematically, you know. Still, it's still possible to get uh, clinch a playoff spot, but I feel like the way we've the way we've been playing, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be almost impossible. And I think it's time that uh, Toro's front office and uh, the coaching staff, you know, start focusing uh, on uh, next season already. Yeah, unfortunately, I do agree with you. It looks like it's gonna be um, probably next year that they can get back to the playoffs. Um, also, I think goal scoring. Um, they haven't had really consistency up top with Luna, Murphy, um, Pungo. They've only scored multiple goals in seven matches this season, and they've played 26. So um, we're not all, you know, math majors, but that's, that's not good. Those aren't good numbers. <laughs> it just and it, and it was just so, so 
bad like how they kind of wanted to start a little bit explosive as, as far as you know the the at the offense you know i mean they had a couple of games where they won like three zero or three one and then all of a sudden like it, the 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 drop was was so steep that pretty much any any other team like if they were able to score a goal uh against the toros you know it was pretty much a done deal that they were gonna that they were gonna at least get the tie so I mean I you, I you, I don't uh, know I don't know if uh, if it's the fact that with under Coach Gonzalez that having just one one uh, lone uh, forward is not is not working with the kind of players you know that that he's got that he's got you know to form that starting eleven I mean does he will he have to kind of modify that to in order to get a you know some better offenses for for next season. Or is it the fact that you know that people like, like Ruben Luna? I mean, I, uh, he's he's a I know he's a good player, and he's one of the one of the few that, that you know that really cares about how the uh, or or has make makes his voice vocal about how he's worried about the the current state of the team, you know. But we need players that need to put the ball in. So let me let me let me ask you this because you know it's it's not that the Toros have a, a a totally bad lineup either, but where at at what point did the Dynamo come down and they're like, hey, you guys need to make a move because this is essentially going to hurt us too. I I'm not sure we're at that point, and I think I think the Dynamo hold the cards in their hands. Mm. Obviously, they control everything soccer wise. So if you are you know in the in the front office? I knew uh, Nick Calba mm. and obviously Chris Canetti, Matt Jordan, the whole thing. If you are looking down at the Toros and you're saying they're really struggling, you guys need to pick it up. It it it's just a call you have to make. You want to send you know Joseph Holland down. Yeah. You want to send some of those younger guys that aren't playing down. You yeah. can do that. Um, but at this point, I think you know it's late in the season. You want as many fresh legs and healthy legs as you want with the first team. So I think they, I think they might kind of just look at this as a, hey, you know, mm-hmm. we didn't make the playoffs. It happens. We had a great year last year, but kind of tough shit this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, they, I think they should. They should at least for these uh, last couple of games, they should give some more minutes, you know, to the players that ha- that were taken up and haven't been seeing a lot of minutes with the first Dynamo first team. Uh, you know, at least to get to get some uh, some. Uh, uh, some some minutes for for them to, for them to play some match fitness for those kind of players if in case the the Dynamo need, uh, need them. But uh, yeah, I would ag- I would agree, and and I think after talking to Junior Gonzalez after the match in, in California this weekend, uh, sounds like Lugatero is probably going to get you know match time the whole rest of the way out, which is good. definitely mm-hmm. uh, welcome for me to hear because he he looks incredible every time he's out there. Pause, but the uh, and with that you just want. Obviously, him, you know, match time is how you're going to develop. So, what, uh, that's the most important thing for him. What uh, what position uh, did did they uh, did they play him on uh, on Sunday? Was it was he playing as a center attacking midfield, or or was he out of yeah, the wing? He was probably as as close to a number ten as the Toros play. Mm-hmm. Um, he he man, he was dropping the ball over the top anytime he wanted to, you know, to Kastner to um, the other side. So. Yeah, I would say long term, that's probably where he's going to be best. Is number ten. I don't think he's as well rounded defensively as you'd like a more holding midfielder to be. So I think um, he really could develop into the number ten. Obviously, him and Joseph Allen both have some promise in that yeah. department. So, uh, Carson, go ahead and tell. Uh, we got we got to wrap things up here soon. We got we got the U.S. Men's National Team. We got to destroy. Um, so, where where can everybody find you? Uh, tell them all that good stuff. Yeah, they can find me at Dynamo Theory. Um, my Bull in the Torns article is out every Wednesday, mm-hmm. and this weekend you can you can find me actually in Houston. I'm making my uh, that's right my pilgrimage down. So yeah, I'll be there. I get in Friday morning. I'm there till Sunday night. I'll definitely uh, catch up with you guys. There's a lot of people down there. I know. Yes, sir. They're are excited to see me. I'm excited to see the guys, and obviously a big win too. Hopefully, yes. Mamo gets a hat trick. That'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, until uh, until Saturday. Uh, maybe we'll get a little clip with him to add into the show at some point this weekend since he'll be in town. It'll be nice. So, uh, um, till, uh, till next week, Carson. Yeah, guys, I'll, I'll see you this weekend. All right, thanks. All right, All right. Carson, later, see you later, Carson. man. Later.
So there's right. our it's happening down in the valley. Yes. So the Toro is not looking too good this season. No. Uh, again, I check out. I feel the pain and I feel the frustration. Check out his article on Dynamo Theory. It's called The Bull in Its Horns. Um, it's always a good read. Uh, also, tonight, uh, check out, and if, through the month of September, I guess we'll try to plug it in there. Um, check out uh, the links in our in the description for the show uh, to, to help get back to, to Houston for, for the Hurricane Harvey relief. Uh, we've, got, sure. we've got Red Cross. We have... Uh, Harris County and Fort Bend links all on, in the descriptions below. Definitely. So uh, it's in the, yeah. Just click description. For sure. So one of those two <laughs> going to start their own uh, Toros podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's an, that uh, was really good, guys. You, you guys have a very really, good really rapport. Good, yeah. <laughs> Even remote, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take another quick break. Uh, be about a minute, uh, and then we'll set up so we can rip apart the uh, U.S. Men's National Team. The finale. Yes, the finale. All right. Cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, dang it. Sweet. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. Uh, and, hey, if you That's are right. live, uh, we are the Peel, first of all. Hi. Uh, <laughs> if you are live out here at 8th Wonder, first of all, awesome. Thanks for being at 8th Wonder. Uh, if you are at all interested in going to the Dynamo match on Saturday and you do not have tickets, even if you have tickets and you're interested, we are giving away two tickets uh, later on this evening. Two free tickets. For free. Um, for free. Free tickets. Free. That keyword free is great. Um, you can come feel free to say hi to Edson, our producer guy over here, and he will take your name down. You get two entries into our drawing, and we'll be giving away very shortly, like 10 minutes, 15 yep, minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes. We'll be giving away both of those tickets to a lucky winner. Um, and uh, so feel free to come sign up for that. Definitely worth the while they're facing Colorado Rapids, which means Timothy Howard is in goal. Alex, uh, Alex Timoth- says Timothy? he has some comments on the like U.S. That. men's national team. Oh, I'm sure he does. We'd be Ooh. here all night if we let Alex talk about it. <laughs> uh, just go ahead and message him in. We're not going to take phone calls because we only got 10 minutes. Yep, you're so. too late. You should have called in earlier. <laughs> we didn't even throw the um, number out. We didn't have time. Oh, also, one more thing. If you are watching on YouTube, feel free to either tweet at Edson or throw up a YouTube chat message to Edson, and he will also get your name in the drawing if you're going to be here. If you're not going to be here, kind of keep that in mind, too. We don't want to give the tickets away and then have somebody not actually use them because that would yes. be kind of bad. So, all right, let's well, talk about this dumpster fire. <laughs> oh my! So God. we had two matches. Uh, was that one Friday and one on Tuesday? <laughs> if you want to call oh, them the, a match, the one Tuesday kind of felt like two matches. You had the first eighty-five minutes and then you had the final five. <laughs> so, in case you didn't know, the U.S. now sit in fourth fourth place in, in the hex standings. Yay. With two matches left. Yay. There's a very good chance we don't go to the World Cup. Y- yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. So oh, it, wait. It, all, it all shit started rolling downhill even faster Friday night with the 2 oh, nothing yeah. loss against Costa Rica in New York. You know what? Everybody laughed at me for saying that Costa Rica was going to do this to the U.S., and here they did it to the U.S. I'm just saying that Costa Rica is a lot better than people give them credit for this year. Yeah, and they are. They are. They're, they're just Same thing with Honduras. Always been a great team. You, I mean, you know what? And, and this came up, yeah. and this was something that Cisco talked about in our little text message group, text message thing. But everybody talks about how MLS is, quote, unquote, helping, you know, should help the U.S. in terms of overall. But what we're seeing is the opposite. And I, I actually said this years ago when this all kind of started with MLS, that getting these international players from countries like Costa Rica, like um, Panama, like Honduras, you know, that sort of thing. That was going to benefit those those teams because these players are now playing against elite top level talent, and they're also getting time to play together. You look at Boney and Kyoto and Elise and how they play off one another. Kyoto 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 and Elise how they play off each other. They play really well off one can, another. Can I throw something in there? And this is a, a discussion that we need to have in the off season. Correct, correct. And and I yeah, go ahead. It honestly boils down, and we were listening to Glenn Davis and uh, Taylor Twelman talk about it. Soccer matters. It, boils down to pay to play in this country because it limits your talent pool. It does. You go to Honduras, they're not paying $2,000 to put their kid into a soccer academy. There is absolutely 100% a discussion to be had over the youth development system in the United States. It is broken, it is horrible, and it is absolutely hindering the United States men's national team, and I'm going to say it, the women's national team 
from seeing youth growth in the United States in terms of talent level and overall talent level. But that's a discussion for another week. Yes, we you know, will, we're going to have the show in the off season. It'll almost that. guaranteed to be the off season, or perhaps there is another two week uh, break. Maybe I don't know if that match SKC's rescheduled match is now breaking up that two week that we had off. But mm, I, I think it is. I think that is. That yes. sounds, sounds right. Um, it makes the most sense. So we'll 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 spend about five minutes on on the Costa Rica. So match. let's get in, let's get into this. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, it was a two nothing loss. Yes, it we was. looked like garbage. Yes, we did. I, I can almost put a bulk of this match on Tim Ream. He was probably one of the worst defenders well, on that pitch. No. See, and you talked no. about how Hold on. on. No. Hold on. He, he was one of the worst defenders, but let's, you can't put it on him. You ready? I'm going to put it on one person and one person only. This falls on Bruce Arena. He has not prepared okay. his players to face this level of talent. He assumed it was CONCACAF, and he was going to come in and roll these teams. They're proving him wrong. I love it because I'm not a big Bruce Arena. The eighth wonder proponent. guy is yeah, laughing at us because he knows how bad the U.S. is. Oh yeah, well <laughs> I, he's probably in Mexico. <laughs> but but it goes what, uh, what, hey, what country do you root for? What's your home? What's your home country? A quién le va? Listen. A quién le va? La selección. A quién le va? La selección nacional. Well, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our our, our we'll listeners let Edson can't. Translate. Our list, yeah, our <laughs> listeners can't find out what's going on. Um, okay. But no, I mean it goes back to you know what with with Taylor Tolman was saying on Glenn Davis about how you know you have these two center backs that aren't really great pairings because no. they're playing so spread out from each other, and then you get a you get a player like Marco Urania. <laughs> Oh, who's just running in or between Lozano, them. Or Lozano, yeah. or Elise, or Kyoto, or, or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, and the thing is, is, that's CONCACAF. Your they're, forwards they're, they're and CONCACAF, on, yeah, they're, they're exactly their, they play that way. Uh, I mean, you got two center backs that are basically on their own island. And you know what? And here's the kicker, and I've said this for a while as well. Omar Gonzalez is not a good center back anymore. No. After his knee injury, he lost a step. He doesn't yep. have the same turn, the same recovery. You could see it in the goal against uh, Honduras. The the uh, the Kyoto goal, you can see it in his attempt at a terrible tackle, uh, and you can just see it in how he plays. He's just he's lost it, and it's a shame because he was at one time a very good center back, and now he's mediocre at best. And he's starting, and it scares me that he is the starting center back right now. And it was it was what what bothered me most is our attack looked extremely good that match. Yeah, our defense cost us, and yeah. somebody wanted to put the match on Tim Howard. I could maybe put one goal in him, but his defense left him out the dry. Oh, yeah, and it's the same thing that happened in the Honduras match, too. It, it was. It was, absolutely. Um, to, to run through the stats, even if you look at the stats, everything was in our favor. We, we, we led in possession. We led on shots. We led on shots on uh, – mm. no, they were tied on shots on target. Um, but they made, they made their attempts count, and yes. we did not. It's as simple as that. Uh, you had Urena who scored twice. One in the 30th minute and the 82nd minute, which was just the dagger on that. Um, I'd be interested to see if that foul count there holds true for the Honduras match. I'm almost guaranteed it does. I'm just curious I bet you to see. Does. And you could see almost the frustration, too, with Clint when he elbowed the... Uh, I forgot who it was yeah, in the box. That, you mentioned that earlier as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. And it was... Costa Rica was getting all the calls. Well, of course. The U.S. wasn't getting anything. Well, yeah, they were conquered. I mean, well, yeah, they were conquer cap. Let's not take anything away from Costa Rica, too, though. The Costa, Rica, no. played a, Costa Rica played a great game. They, they knew exactly what they needed to do to shut yes. the U.S. down. And once they scored that goal, off the counterattack, just slow the game down. That's all they did. And that's CONCACAF, though. And that's CONCACAF. That is exactly yeah, that, that is what every yeah. team in CONCACAF yeah. does, except for but Mexico. This is also, this is well, I can't say it's the same Costa Rica team, but it, it don't forget, Costa Rica, last time they were in the World Cup, they did go to the quarterfinals. Yeah. And a miracle run. Yep. And, and I think people Los were banking, ticos. oh, well, we beat them in Gold Cup. You also have to understand, it wasn't the same team. It was Costa Rica's B team. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've said it all along, their A team is much better than their B team. Yeah, it, they're scary good. Now, and, our, and unfortunately, our B team is not much worse than our A team right now. No. Um, that is saying a and lot. And another thing, and this goes with both these matches, it's scary to see how much better Pulisic is over the rest of the team. It's Pulisic... The rest of the team, um, and it is showed in is, Costa Rica. Uh, Nagby, I wouldn't take anything Nagby. away from Nagby. Yeah. Na well, I was going to say Nagby's nowhere on his level, though. He's no, not, he's not, not on even Pulisic's close. level. But he was. Granted, there's not many players in the world him, that though. are right now on Pulisic's so level. So then it takes us into Tuesday. Oh. We were already down, oh. losing a match against Costa Rica. Oh. Tuesday we took on Honduras in Honduras. Early kickoff, 4:30 kickoff our time. It was essentially the Dynamo's B team. C. Um, <laughs> C team. No, C. 
Oh. Yes. See, as in yes. yes. Okay. I see what you did there. It was the Dynamo past and present uniting to try to dethrone the U.S. It was pretty cool. It, it made it like that. Very close. It was, it. it was a very bittersweet moment. That goal from Kyoto. Oh. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, what he did to, what he did to Beasler just <laughs> and I mean he didn't do anything. He just froze Beasler enough to get the goal. Can we also say how bad Kyoto and Elise made Beasley so, look? R- real fast, Kyoto, do that again. They twice made him look play bad. against Sporty Kansas. They did it a couple of moments, but they made Zussi look worse. Well yeah. But Beasley actually for a good chunk of that match was holding his own. Yeah, I mean he had moments. You could tell he was starting to get frustrated though, because he was starting to throw those guys at the turf. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I really, I really want to be at practice this week. Oh yeah, uh, when they get back, I want to see. You think these Wilmer? Guys. You think Wilmer oh, pulls no. them into the office no. day one? Oh, no, I think I think Wilmer lets them go at it in the practice <laughs> field. Are you kidding me? Wilmer loves the, that level of competition. And that you know fire. what they okay. do? They they shake hands and they say, you know, we're oh on no, the same team. those guys, no, they're hugging. Uh, yeah. Francisco, they're loving each Francisco other. wants yeah. to ask: Are we are we for them not starting Clint? And yes, I am for them not starting Clint. Clint needs to be the super sub right now. And mm-hmm. if you look at Gold Cup. When he came off the bench, he made a difference. His form never looked better. He made a difference immediately. Yep. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, speaking oh, of USA. Edson, you're, you're for Dempsey starting? Yeah. Edson, just, get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just, I have to do it once a week. It, it's a requirement. Uh, Francisco says kidding. Zussi is not a defender. Zussi is, down, is no not foul. a defender. Zussi is not a defender. You are 100% right. He has been right. forced into that position. Um, Alex says embarrassing, horrible p- pitch, trash trash rep. I, I do want to call out that pitch. That ball was rolling really funky, and that does disrupt the flow it, of players, especially it, like Pulisic and and um, Nagby and, and but Acosta. But at the same time, you you're professionals. You gotta, yeah. Exactly. You're professionals. You've got to be able to, be able to deal that. with it. But it's CONCACAF. There's only three countries that have good pitches in CONCACAF. You know, you know what was frustrating in that match, though? <laughs> For a large chunk of it, we took to just launching the ball downfield and hoping that Clint could get to the ball mm-hmm. or Morris could get to the ball or you know Bobby could get to the ball. I'm and sure that, that is exactly what we used to do under Bruce Arena before yeah. Bob Bradley took over and kind of started to institute a different style of soccer in this country. And I swear, to, I swear if we go back to long ball f- soccer, I'm going to boycott the U.S. men's <laughs> national team. So with that. Um, and, yes, I really do mean that. Uh, it, it was a tight one. It was uh, tight. Kyoto got on the board first in the 27th minute. Our boy Kyoto. Yes. Uh, beautiful goal. And I couldn't even really be mad about it either. Um, hey, Edson, did we get contact info for any of those people that actually signed? Yes. The, okay, yes, good. See? Just making sure. He's that's, good. I, I, uh, that's why he's our producer. Yes. Uh, and then super sub, Bobby Wood in the 89th minute with the assist from uh, Jordan Morris and Matt Beasler um, scoring to equalize. And it felt like, it almost felt like some of our away goals. Uh, for the Dynamo, it felt almost like a win, or maybe it was just more of a sigh of relief. I think that was a sigh of relief. Yeah. It, did not, jo- it did not. It did not feel like a also win. With that, yeah. Well, no, it did <sighs> not feel like a win. We we did we did scrape a very important goal yeah, out of that. We, did. we needed that point. Jordan Morris with the flick. SKC getting lost. Getting that ball back in. You know what though? Right, credit to Bobby <laughs> Wood. Credit to Bobby Wood oh, for following Bobby that Wood play and through on the play. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and, and I hate to say this, but you know what? If it was anyone other than Bobby Wood up there. Maybe Clint Dempsey does that, but that's a Bobby Wood goal. Francisco Bobby throws Wood. this out there. Could we see Don Kinnear as our next coach in the U.S.? No, because he's playing. He's uh, coaching for L.A. now as assistant coach, and he'll probably take over eventually when Siggy decides to retire again for the third time. Doesn't matter. No, it doesn't really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the U.S. could still say, hey, want to coach? I'm wondering. I, I, it's interesting. I, I don't know. I, I, it's not like L.A. should, uh, God forbid, L.A. Galaxy become – a pipeline for U.S. men's national team coaches. Oh. Uh, you just, I mean, and that's what you're talking about right there. That's back yeah. to back U.S. men's national team coaches coming from L.A. I don't want to. And then MLS not only coach. that, the last coach before Jurgen is now going to coach at L.A. F.C. So Los Angeles sure, is yeah. becoming. Los Angeles is literally becoming the city of old coaches that are past their prime. Ouch. So do we want do, so do we want another MLS coach? For U.S. and men's national team? Uh, if it's Oscar Pereja or Wilmer Cabrera, yes. If it's Mike Petke, I'm okay with that as well. If it's anyone else, pro- well, could be Pablo. I, I would take. I can agree with the first I would two, take, maybe not Mike Petke. I would take, actually, I would take Brian, Pablo Mester- Masterwady as the next U.S. men's Brian national says, coach. Brian says, y'all don't Because he, think about last year's Colorado. Think about what he did with that team. Uh, Brian says, y'all don't understand. The long ball was uh, only has to work once. 
and it didn't. That oh, was not I a see. long ball. I see what Francisco is asking. I, I, I interpreted his question wrong. Can you repeat it with the proper interpretation, please? He mentioned, or since you mentioned the long ball, he asked if, if Dom was coaching. Oh, the, the <laughs> correct answer is yes, probably via phone or Skype. <laughs> I.e., he was pulling an Eric Walnalda. So let me, I, because we, we got we to wrap up the show. Um, we do? Are you sure? I'm I, I want to. I got to try to get this edited yeah, we're, tonight. We're already heading into stoppage time. We're heading past stoppage time. <laughs> this is long injury, stoppage injury time. time. Yeah. Well, we did have a substitution. He did. Oh, have we did have a substitution. So <laughs> we have to count. Bit, we have to so count five, five minutes for time. that. Yeah. Well, at least we'd have to go to VAR today. Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, so let me. <laughs> okay, that was well played. <laughs> that was well played. That was good. So let me. In ask. case you're wondering, no, this has to be stated. In case you're wondering, I committed a party foul a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and that was VAR level catch because it wasn't caught live. It was oh, caught on hilarious. VAR after the fact. <laughs> that's hilarious. So while <laughs> no I'm party foul this week. Just let it be known. Well, while I'm uh, bringing up the the poll that we had asked on our Twitter. Oh yeah, we had a poll that we sent out. Sean, do we do we make it to the World Cup? No. Okay. Josh, do we make it to the World Cup? Yes. Do we make Justin, it out of the group stage? Justin, do we make it to the World Cup? No. Edson, do we make it to the World Cup? Yes. Yes. Two yeses, two noes. Josh, do we make it out of the group stage? No. Edson, do we make it out of the group stage? No. No. The real question is, so none of us have. Do we we get a point in the group stage? That's the real question. None of us. Well, the thing is, none of us have. At this point, just qualify. None of us have the U.S. advancing past the group stage. I I don't. That is a damn nation if there ever was one on the current state of the U.S. Look, men's national team. Look, wow. I, I told no, I told myself this like two, three years ago. Okay, do not even hope for anything good heading into this World Cup. Just qualify. Yep. That's it. Just <laughs> qualify. Right, so, Just so one in. final time, real quick, before we we'll, we'll keep well, going with the U.S. talk. Let me, let me go with the poll real quick. Oh, okay, yeah, do the poll. US. Okay, so out of fifty votes today, sixty-six uh, percent of the people that voted say we can turn it around. Thirty-four percent says they won't make it. That's that's a high percentage though. Really? It is. Wow. It's thir- it's, 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 that's thirty three people. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. We had thirty three of fifty five. That's not how that works. Your math that's is 50 wrong. Votes. Fifty. Yeah. Thirty three yeah. of fifty. That's not thirty three percent, my friend. <laughs> that's not how that 34%. works. Let's do half of fifty or half <laughs> well, of thirty. While they're arguing about math. Anyways, no. Before uh, we Francisco do that, Francisco did say, "How do you sub out a player that was subbed in?" <laughs> Hashtag CONCACAF. <laughs> Uh, hey, so let it be known, it's, been, it's happened before. It has yes. happened. Hold on. Yeah. Brian does say yes. Fourth is the playoff spot, and as it looks, it could be what, Australia and or Syria? Yeah, yes. it would probably. Actually, yeah. it would be Australia at this point. I don't think it's going to. I don't think. I think Syria actually it's qualified. Still, okay. It's still up for. Yeah, it's so still it would be. A, it would be a, a home and home. We'll discuss uh, it next week. Yes, we'll discuss that next week. So if you're Brian. here. Okay, what I'm trying to get to, and this is important because okay. I want to do this before the giveaway. Yes. So if you're here and you're listening to us live, if you're out there in the audience right now, chilling and eating and drinking beer, first of all, thank you for drinking beer. Every pint is a dollar donated to Hurricane Harvey Relief Fund here at 8th Wonder. Thank you. Um, if you're here at 8th Wonder and you want to go to the Dynamo match tomorrow, we are giving away two tomorrow, tickets to the Saturday. Saturday. That's right. It's only two. Good God. It's only it's Wednesday. Wednesday. All right, it's okay. the Dynamo match on Saturday. If you want to go to that Dynamo match on Saturday and you want two tickets, say hi to my friend Edson over here, and he will get you signed up for our drawing. We are giving away two tickets for free to the Dynamo match, and these are good tickets. These are not top level. These are lower bowl. I don't know exactly where. I haven't seen them, but they're lower bowl. Uh, all you have to do is just come say hi to Edson. He's going to get your name and uh, some general contact info, and you guys will be signed up for a chance to win two tickets. If you're listening on YouTube, feel free to shoot a loot YouTube a YouTube chat. A YouTube chat message, and he will get you in our drawing as well. Yes. Uh, I'll give you about two minutes to get up here if you do want to sign up. Yep. Um, we'll give you two minutes if you want to sign up for the Dynamo match giveaway. Yes. yes. Giving away two tickets for the Dynamo match. Oh, free. All these free people walking tickets. by, and nobody wants to <laughs> sign up for a chance to win two tickets to the two Dynamo match. To the Dynamo game. Really? I'm so sad at every one of you that's not signing up. <laughs> this, is, um, this is the fan base that we have. It's all Astros fans. <laughs> We're only at eighth eighth wonder. I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, but to be fair, Verlander, We're down the street Verlander the is stadium. awesome, and I can't blame him. That's awesome. So Cameron Maven is so's his wife. Home run, God. Tune well. in next week for the Astros podcast. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> that was funny. Well, we've hit on every uh, every Houston sport this Francisco week. Francisco does Rockets. ask, what if our group consists Who, of way, Russia, Japan, Japan yeah. and yeah. France? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Francisco says, what if our group consists of Russia, Japan, and France? 
So you're saying the group of death that we will not make it out of because none of us already have us going out of the group, even if it's a weak group? Like, that wasn't even a question for anybody. Everybody, like the two, Josh and Edson, who both say, oh, we'll make it to the group stage, they were both like, nope, we're not making it out of the group stage. So if it's them, I mean, we're not going to get a point, let alone get a goal. No. Russia will find a way to win. Japan will beat us because they always do. And France is France. In my underpants? Oh, God. <laughs> All right, uh, Edson, Just Edson, kidding. Pull, us, pull us the name. France is good. Randomize that name. They may not be here. It's okay. If you are here and we call out your name, come say hi. Quinn de Leon. If you're here. I think that was one of these guys, actually. Okay. If you're here, you get two free tickets. If you're not here, then we'll say hi to you later via phone or yes. email or, or Twitter. Or you can just watch our show <laughs> next week. <laughs> That's a little late. Game it Saturday. Is. Yeah, game Saturday, bro. <laughs> That's not right, how it works. Uh, well, you so can tell us how you enjoyed the game. There you go. Yes. You can come back and say hi and tell yes. us how it was. Uh, so, Quinn DeLeon got two free tickets uh, to the Dynamo match. If you would like to go to the next home match outside of Colorado, come back here or watch us on YouTube. You'll have another chance to win. Most we have likely. Every Wednesday nights on, at 7 o'clock. There you go. M- most likely. Yes. We're not guaranteeing We're every not guaranteeing, week. But if the, okay, so the way this is working is if the match is sold out before the day that we do our Twitter, our giveaway, then we won't have tickets. If they're not sold out, then we'll have tickets. Francisco, you have season tickets. Get out of here. But he brings people, so actually he could win. I would actually be okay with that. Yeah, but he said boo. Did he really? He did. Why did he say boo? I don't know. Anyway. Um, Cisco, so you're not sure getting cats for free after the match. <laughs> <laughs> be sure to check out uh, check out in the description below, and even when I re-edit the video, it will also be in there. When, um, I, get, when I get home, I will add all those links to yes. our, our site, and we will also retweet them out multiple times this week as well. I will post a ton of links. I will post the Houston Strong link from the Dynamo, yes. their shirts. I will tweet out the, or I will post the TA, DBG, and uh, two, uh, 210 Alliance link for their uh, Enemies for 90s, Texans for Life shirt. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, I guess it's going to do it for this week. Join us next week, next Wednesday. Uh, Please do. We like when people come say hi. Yeah. Um, I'm Justin. I'm Josh. I'm Sean. You hesitated on that and one. I know. Edson. And that's Edson. Edson uh, Ochoa. And uh, we're the Peel. Signing out. Hey, uh, no, 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 no. Houston Strong, guys. Yeah, Houston, Houston strong, strong, guys. Houston Strong. <laughs> we're all out of beer. Yeah, we, <laughs> we are all out of beer. It's been a long show. It's a long show.